as we welcome home one of our most talented stars from our recent Broadway triumph. In fact, I can't think of an actress who could be more aptly described by tonight's play title than Rosalind Russell. What a woman. And as her co-star in this Columbia picture, which I had the pleasure of producing and directing, is one of our most versatile artists, Robert Cummings. No relative, but I wish he were. But for a moment... Its title, The Whirlwind, stares from every bookshelf. And the name of Anthony Street, its author, is on every tongue. Right now, in an office of a Knickerbocker magazine... Well, Henry, you can forget that article on Anthony Street. What do you mean, forget it? Because there is no Anthony Street. It's a pen name. I just talked to the publisher. The author of The Whirlwind doesn't want himself known. Wait a minute. He writes the best-selling novel in ten years and doesn't want himself known. What's the matter with him? I don't know. But the next best thing to Anthony Street is the person who did more than anyone else to put that book over. Carol Ainsley. Carol Ainsley? She's Anthony Street's agent? Anthony Street hasn't any agent. But Carol Ainsley thought it was going to be a bestseller, hooked up with the publishers, and did the best promotion job in the history of the business. And all for her usual 10%. So what? I'm sorry to bore you, Henry, but Carol Ainsley happens to be phenomenal. And our readers will want to know about her. Well, they want to know about Anthony Street. But they'll settle for Carol Ainsley. She's all over the newspapers, isn't she? This search to find an unknown male to play the whirlwind in the movies? Uh, say, isn't uh, she some relative of Senator Ainsley? His daughter. Important background, everything. What more do you want for an article? Oh, me? Nothing. I don't, you don't even want to read it. I'm afraid you will because you're going to write it. Oh, now, just a minute. Carol Ainsley's going to be in our next issue, so grab your hat and get over to her office. Are you serious? Get over there! You're serious. You're serious. <laughs> Everybody here, Miss Ainsley, any time you want to begin. Thanks, Timmy. Come on into my office, everyone. Well, I guess you all know where I've been. Atlanta, and Memphis, Chicago, St. Louis, Boston. Harold, you found the whirlwind? Are you kidding? My notes read like a coroner's report. Oh, great. Now, look, everyone. When a certain motion picture producer named David Arthur bought the screen rights to the whirlwind, I made it part of the contract that we'd supply the man to play the part. Fine, great. Only now, Mr. Arthur's becoming a little unreasonable. He insists that we deliver him. Well, where do we stand? Absolutely nowhere. Sorry, Carol. I won't believe it. I simply cannot believe in all these United States that there isn't a man who can play the whirlwind. What's more, I don't think that we... Oh, uh, uh, Timmy. Uh, there in the corner. Uh, with his hat on. Who is he? I thought he came in with you. With me? Excuse me, I'll get your phone. Hello? Oh, uh... uh you there? Uh, you with the hat on? Uh, yes. You're new here, aren't you? Well, as a matter of fact, It's I... Hollywood again, Miss Ainsley. David Arthur. Oh, what did I say to him? You were never any good when you rehearsed. Here, talk to him. Uh, David, David, David! Oh, darling. Well, I know, but there isn't anything to worry about. Well, I have two wonderful possibilities. One of them is bound to pan out. I I'll deliver him when and as I promised. Oh, David, now don't worry about it. I'll keep you posted on everything that happens. Just give my love to... to, to... Sophie. Uh, to Sophie. Uh, that's right, darling. Bye. Oh, how did I do? Got us a reprieve. Well, we can't hold him off forever. Oh, well. Thanks, everyone. That's all for now. Oh, uh, you. You with a hat on. Uh, are you bald? <laughs> bald? And uh, just what do you do in this firm? Yeah, oh, you see, I, I don't work here. No, I'm a, I'm a spy. Oh. oh, I see. But who are you spying on and what for? Well, on you for Knickerbocker Magazine. A reporter? And he's been sitting there listening to everything it's I can... It's a very think. colorful business you run, Miss Ainsley. Thank you. What is your name? Pepper. Henry Pepper. Do you ever take your hat off, Mr. Pepper? Uh, only in recognition of exceptional achievement, Miss Ainsley. Well, now, just what did you have in mind for your magazine? Well, the boss wants an article on you. Oh, well, well, I didn't mean to be rude. I'll send for my biography from the publicity department. It covers everything for my Well, thanks all the same, Miss Ainsley, but I work in kind of a funny way. So I gather. 
Yes, well, I work well, you might say, from the inside. When I'm on an assignment, I subject, well, my subject and I practically, uh, might say, live together. That's cozy. <laughs> Mr. Pepper, I happen to be a very busy woman. Yeah, and a very smart woman. You can see the value of an article in Knickerbocker. I figure maybe four installments. Your and... coffee, Miss Ainsley. Oh, thanks, Jimmy. Just set it down. Oh, do I have your permission to drink this while it's hot? Oh, sure. Go right ahead. Thank you. I'll just catch up on my reading. Hmm. The Whirlwind by Anthony Street. Now, what's this blurb on the jacket? Mr. Street is author, soldier, sailor, a, sailor, a man of the world with a sense of the world in conflict, a tidal wave of action, six foot four of magnificent manhood, ex-athlete, ex-footballer. Let, let me see that. Hmm. Man of the world with a sense of the world in conflict. Six feet four. Right under our noses. Oh, uh, Timmy, Timmy, get me Anthony Street Publishers. Tidal wave of action. Six feet four of magnificent manhood. Do you mean to say that you haven't seen him? No, 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 of course not. Anthony Street's his pen name. Everything was arranged through his publishers. And you keep that out of the knickerbocker. Mr. Lindsay, Miss Ainsley. Hello, Lindsay. Yes? Uh, what's Anthony Street's real name and address? But, but Carol, you, you know I'm honor-bound not to reveal... I don't intend to reveal anything. I just want to have a little talk with him. Now, who is he? And, and, and not too loud. I'm not alone. But I promised... Oh, oh my. Well, his name is Michael Cobb. He lives in Buxton, Pennsylvania. Thanks. Timmy... Oh, Timmy, get me a reservation right away for Buxton, Pennsylvania. And now, Mr. Pepper, if you'll excuse me. You going somewhere? Out to vote. Yeah, here I am, Miss. 251 and Fulton Avenue. But this can't be right. It's a faculty house. Yeah, that's right. A lot of the professors from Buxton College live here. Professor? You mean he's a... Oh, yeah. uh, Thanks. College professor. Oh, brother. Uh, how do you do? I had a message that you wanted to see me. Professor Cobb? P professor Michael Cobb? Yes? I I I'm Carol Ainsley. Could I talk to you for a minute? Well, I... I suppose no one could object here in the library. Michael Cobb. Well, the jacket was pleasantly accurate, wasn't it? Mr. Anthony Street. What? Look here, how did you know that? That was a complete secret between me and my publishers. I demand to know. I won't be shocked. I demand to know. I sold your book for motion pictures. Your secret is absolutely safe with me, and I... Well, I... I... Uh, uh, why, why are you staring at me? I, is this college co-educational? No, it is not. Too bad. Please, what do you want to see me about? You see, I've been commissioned to find a man to play the part of the whirlwind. You see, on the screen. Well, I wish you every success. Good day. Well, I've searched everywhere. Seen everyone. I... <laughs> I thought I had failed. But now I know I haven't. Professor... There's only one man who can possibly do justice to the character of your wonderful book. That man is you. Me? Portray the character of the whirlwind? On the screen? That's right. That's ridiculous. Now, please, please listen to me. This is of the utmost importance. Importance to the millions of people who've read your book. Important not only... Ainsley, I wrote that book on an impulse. It's entirely without literary but merit. Listen, Professor Cobb, regardless of what you think of it, Think of what it means to your readers. Little people. Millions of them living out their humdrum, sordid lives. To whom the excitement and romance of this book means escape and happiness. And do you happen to know how many people are going to see this book on the screen? Eighty million. Eighty million? Hmm. Uh, nevertheless, Miss Ainsley, I... Now, you can't say a book like that is not important. And you can't say it's unimportant to who portrays the whirlwind on the screen. The minute I saw you, I knew yes, you were the first... Ainsley, per I am a scholar. My doctor's thesis was on a certain phase of Elizabethan literature, and I'm prouder of those three copies than I am of a million whirlwinds. No, it's utterly impossible. You're afraid the college won't approve? That's only one consideration. No, it's all out of the question. Goodbye, Miss Ainsley. It's a pity. What is? To have found the right man and to have lost him. 
Goodbye, Professor. Hello, Miss Aisley. Pepper! What's the big idea following me here? Well, there's a train back to New York at 5.30. Answer my question. Well, I thought I explained that. It's part of my job to follow you. That's how I learn things. Why don't you try it with your hat off? Now, you look here, Mr. Pepper. I won't be able to give you a single minute while I'm in Buxton. My business here is extremely confidential. Yes, I know. Anthony Street. Mr. Street's identity is a secret. Look, Miss Ainsley, my assignment isn't Anthony Street. It's you. Now, do we catch that 5.30 for New York? Sorry, but I've just made an appointment to see the dean of Buxton College at exactly 5.30. Goodbye, Mr. Pepper. <laughs> Your pardon, Dean Schaefer, but Professor Cobb is here now. Professor Cobb? Something to do with Miss Ainsley, wasn't it? Miss Gilbert, do you realize that from what Miss Ainsley said, I have reason to believe that a certain novel was written on the campus of Buxton College? No, not the friend. Yes. Dean Schaefer, no. Miss Gilbert, I have further suspicions. Send in Professor Cobb. You, you wanted to see me, Dean Schaefer? Professor Cobb. Have you heard of a book called The Whirlwind? Uh, the Whirlwind? Uh, yes, sir. A romantic work, quite uh, popular, I believe. I've heard that it's unadulterated trash. Oh, I wouldn't say that. What's more? I have a strong suspicion it was written by a member of this faculty under the pen name of Anthony Street. Oh, it's unthinkable. A piece of tripe like The Whirlwind originating in Boston. I don't think tripe is exactly a fair word, sir. Too many people have found this book important. Oh, they have. Little people, sir. Thousands of them living out their humdrum, sordid lives, to whom the adventure and excitement of this book are a relief and a boon. And the same book will be filmed. Do you know how many people are waiting to see it? Eighty million. Eighty million little people, sir, seeking escape and happiness. I thought so. Anthony Street, you! Yes, sir. Anthony Street. Mr. Pepper, what is this second sight that makes you catch the same train to New York I'm taking? Well, no second sight at all. No other train. Let's Ms. get aboard. Miss Ainsley! Miss Ainsley! Oh, that's the car! Oh, Miss Ainsley. Miss Ainsley, does your offer still hold? About doing the whirlwind? You changed your mind? Well, some unexpected circumstances lead me to reconsider. I, I thought if your offer is oh, still open... Get on the train! But my, my, my thing... Mr. Pepper will lend you whatever you need. Won't you, Mr. Pepper? Who, me? Well, that's very kind of you. Come on, come on, Mr. Pepper! Well! For heaven's sake! Yeah, you win. Well, what's the matter? Look at Mr. Pepper. I am looking at Mr. Pepper. He's got his hat off. This is all the leak at night now, and in New York, the entire Ainsley staff has hastily assembled in Carol's penthouse. The chief herself has just walked in the door with a tall, handsome, thoroughly bewildered Professor Cobb. Here we are, everybody. Meet Mr. Anthony Street, the whirlwind. Yeah, oh, yeah. How do you do? Well, now, I won't keep you long, but we've got to work fast. Oh, Timmy, this is Miss Timmons, my secretary. Mr. Street? How do you do? Timmy, wire Hollywood right away. Tell them we've definitely found the right man for the whirlwind to be delivered on the agreed date. I don't tell them anything else. Oh, Ed, Ed, this is Mr. Clark, our photographer. Uh, how do you do? Hey, what a guy. Ed, we're going to need publicity pictures and fast. Now, everything concerning Mr. Street is to be handled right here under my personal supervision. Is that clear? Oh, Ruth, uh, this is Miss Fenwick, our instructor in dramatics, Mr. Street. Well, well, Mr. Street. Ruthie, he's got to learn to read lines right away. I want him to make a screen test in ten days. Where's Pat? Oh, oh, there you are. Pat O'Shea is one of our key men, Mr. Street. How do you do? Oh, you don't know how glad I am to know you. Pat, get Tony Williams to measure him for a suit, make it brown, double-breasted, and right. straight. I would suggest Where's that Richie? I... Oh, Richie. I... Richie, you've got to get him in condition. Two hours a day in the gym. Yes, ma'am. We'll show him, Mr. Street. Well, you'd all better go home and get a good night's rest. And maybe the last one for some time. Thank you okay. very much. Okay. 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 
Uh, well, Professor, we're underway. Yes, I, I'd better get along to a hotel. Hotel? Oh, you're staying here. Uh, here? You've got work to do. It's most important that you stay near me. Yes, but, but, well, I mean... And there's a guest suite that my clients use. I think you'll find it's both isolated and comfortable. Oh, Mina! Are Mr. Street rooms ready? Oh, yes, Miss. Miss Ainsley, I, I had no idea of staying here. I mean, Oh, I... now, look here. This isn't Buxton. Run along now, and don't worry. Uh, better show him the way, Nina. Well, well, good night, Miss Ainsley. Miss uh, Ainsley? <gasps> I'm impressed. Pepper! I'm deeply impressed. I wondered where you were. Yes, your staff let me in just now as they were leaving. Well, I'll have to speak to them about it in the morning. Say, how did you, uh, how did you do this, Miss Ainsley? Get the professor out of Buxton. Well, I'm afraid that will have to remain a trade secret. Hmm? Shall we just put it down to charm? Charm, huh? The velvet glove on top and underneath the brass knuckles. <laughs> oh, I, I never show my knuckles. <laughs> You'd better run along, Mr. Pepper. I have a tough day ahead. I'm working against the deadline, you know. Yes, so am I. And uh, until you give me 15 minutes, I can't even start. Well, if I do give you 15 minutes, do I stand a reasonable chance of not finding you underfoot every time I turn around? A reasonable chance, yes. <laughs> All right. Well, now, what do you want to know? Well, let's start at the beginning. Um, how about your childhood? Oh. <laughs> oh, I had a divine childhood. <laughs> Glorious. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm sorry it was as bad as all I am. <laughs> now, see here, Pepper. You asked a question and I answered it. Yeah, Miss Ainsley, your mother was Cora Ainsley, a great actress. Your father's Senator Ainsley. Oh, I get it, Doctor. Poor little rich girl left alone day after day in her own private swimming pool. And no, thank you. I'm not having any of it. Okay. What sort of childhood did you have? It was very stimulating, having both one's parents so successful. All their friends were brilliant, talented, uh, writers, musicians. Exactly. And here's what I think, Miss Ainsley. I think that ever since you were a child, you've had to prove something. Carol Ainsley had to be somebody. It was expected of her. Very interesting, Doctor. When do you throw on the colored slides? And furthermore, you wanted success in a hurry. So you took other people, developed their abilities, sold them high, and made their second-rate talents pass for pure genius. And what's so wrong with that? Mm, only one thing that in all your hurry, you overlook doing a job on yourself. Oh. I don't exist. Is that it? Well, about 10% of you does. And I think given a chance, the other 90 might be, uh, well, terrific. <laughs> Good night, Miss Ainsley. Morning, Pat. Well, for those photographs of Anthony Street. Yeah. Say, was that guy's mother frightened by a camera? Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, well, he just lacks confidence. How was he in dramatic truth? You really want the truth? Oh, bad as that, huh? Well, it's only the first day. We've got to get a screen test in ten days. Hey, uh, how about giving us some more time, Carol? We promised David Arthur that we'd have that screen test out in Hollywood by the 27th. Oh, incidentally, if Mr. Henry Pepper shows his face around yeah. here... Want... Oh, never mind. Just keep him away from Anthony Street. <laughs> Professor, how's it going? Hello, Mr. Pepper. Oh, like that, huh? Say, where is everybody? Back there, in the things we projection room. Oh, yes, they're looking at your scene desk, huh? Yeah, again. Mr. Pepper, I am not a film actor. Well, does it matter? <laughs> it sounds like they're about finished. I hope so. I couldn't stand it. Nobody said a word, but I could tell what they were thinking. Well, that's all, folks. Bright and early in the morning. Well, Michael, awful ordeal, wasn't it? Seeing yourself on the screen for the first time. Yes, please. Ah, oh, don't worry. You'll be amazed at the improvement in your next test. Next test? Yes, yes, of course. Mr. Pepper, did I have an appointment with you? Well, you you told me to come around any evening I was ready. I told you to telephone first. Yes, I... Ainsley, as for making another Michael, test... Michael, please, this is not the time. Well, I, uh, I could leave. I am not an actor. I can never be oh, an actor. Oh, not an actor, not an actor, not an actor. What are actors? Simply people. And what's acting? Simply being people. Well, if there's a train back to Buxton tonight, I'm going to take it. Professor, you astound me. A person with your imagination, your, your, your intelligence. After all, what are you asked to do? To pretend. 
simply to pretend. Pretend? Pretend to be in love? I've made a complete idiot of myself. It's so difficult to pretend you're in love. Come here. All right. You're standing before the woman you love. You have your arms around her. No, 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 no. Around her. All the way around her. <laughs> there. Now, what's so difficult about that? You hold her. Really hold her. Closer. Tighter. <laughs> That's right. And her face is close to yours. Like this. Now, what would your next impulse be? I... I... <laughs> well, what is the next thing you to pretend? A woman as close to you as this, her face as near to you as mine. You pretend to want to kiss her. And you do. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's all there is to it. Well, oh, Miss Ainsley, I... I... Good night, Miss Ainsley. <laughs> well, I, I guess he found it a little too warm in here. <laughs> now, where do you think he's going? Well, I judge he's on a beeline back to Buxton. <laughs> well, I don't imagine you're in a mood for work. Hmm? No? No, no, I thought not. Well, if you excuse me, Miss Ainsley, I find it a little too cold in here. <laughs> You know what time it is, Henry? It's after midnight. Yes, poor Miss Ainsley. She must be just going nuts by now. How does you know where to find me? Well, I'll tell you, Sue, I just figured that if uh, I were you, I'd head to the nearest bar. Here you were. You know, what I regret most about all this is not what's happened to me, but, well, she's worked so hard. Yeah, well, that's her business. But she took such a personal interest, and, and in such a warm way. Oh, you felt that. Oh, huh? definitely. Very sympathetic. Well, uh, drink up, Professor. You know, Henry, there's something challenging about failure. When a man has undertaken something right or wrong, there's an urge to see it through. Uh-huh. And uh, I'll be right back, Professor. Excuse me, I just remembered to make a phone call. Hello? Yeah, this is Pepper, Miss Ainsley. Did I wake you up? Wake me up? I'm going crazy. Anthony Street's disappeared, so hang up if you don't mind. May I make a prediction? I'm uh, not at all interested in your predictions. And what's more, I have Ms. people... Miss Ainsley, wait... ten to one, the professor's back on the job in the morning, bright and early. Do you know where he is? Now, look here, Pepper, if you've done anything to that man uh, before... Just a hunch, Miss Ainsley. Good night. <laughs> I hope you didn't worry about me, Miss Ainsley. Where have you been? In a Turkish bath. <laughs> yes, there's nothing like it to clear the head. <laughs> oh, I see everything in a different light this morning. It's no sin to fail, Miss Ainsley, but once you've undertaken anything, it is a sin to give up trying. It, it is? Well, let's have another go at it, shall we? Uh, my dramatics, I mean. Is Miss Fenwick here? Uh, no, 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 not yet. Well, it's just as well. I'll have time for a workout first in the gym. Goodbye, Henry, and thanks a lot. <laughs> He's a swell guy, isn't he? <laughs> Mr. Pepper, yeah. how were you able to call me up last night and predict a thing like this? Oh, we, we got to talking, you know, Michael and I. Oh, and he began thinking better of the job, huh? No, he began thinking better of you. Hmm? Yes, you see, a handsome thing like you can't kiss a man like that and not expect to change the whole course of his life. And he doesn't know it, Miss Ainsley, but the professor's in love. Are you crazy? Say, you know something? If you play your cards right, and, well, you've not only got a star on your hands, you've got him right in your lap. Now, the new screen test, I just thought the boy's terrific. Dad, didn't I tell you? I simply don't understand just ten days, Carol, and he's become an actor. I wonder what hit him. Nothing hit him. He's intelligent, sensitive. He nearly caught on. Well, take the test out to the airport, Pat. By tomorrow night, you'll know what Hollywood thinks of it. Then what? Well, on Wednesday, we release the publicity. The whole country will hear about him, complete with pictures, everything. And on Thursday, the whirlwind and I take the train to Hollywood. Sure you want to go? I want to deliver this prize pack personally. Oh, now look, Pat. On Wednesday night, I want a reception. Yeah? Newspaper and magazine editors. Have the invitation read simply to meet Mr. Anthony Street. Mr. Pepper's on the phone, Miss Oh, you yeah, tell him to uh, go to... Uh, 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 let me have it. 
Well, how do you do, Mr. Pepper? Uh, Miss Ainsley, I have the first installment for you to look over. Well, I couldn't possibly do it today. I'll have to look at it another time. You'll read it today, Miss Ainsley, or it goes to press just as I wrote it. Is that all right? No, no, it isn't. Oh, all right. Five o'clock here at my apartment. That man's an epidemic. <laughs> Just the first installment, Miss Ainsley. Well, do you like it? Hmm, it's pretty good. Thanks for keeping a civil tongue in your typewriter. <laughs> well, now shall we uh, go on from there? Well, we polished off my childhood. What now? Business? It, no, a uh, heart interest. But, Miss Ainsley, hasn't your life been remarkably free of men? Well, of course not. Why, I've had lots of bows, thousands of them. Yeah, but never the one, the the right one. Well. You force it out of me. There was one. Or only one. Uh, Jeffrey. I was about 20, skiing that spring in Austria. He was an English boy. There on his Easter holiday. It was love at first sight. You, you know, preordained. I sailed home to tell my parents about it. Uh, we were going to get married. Then it happened. That summer. He didn't live. He drowned. So you see, after that, there was... Yeah, a... soft music now. What? <laughs> so of course, you know, I don't believe a word of it. Well, that. why not? It was a very moving story. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was almost good enough to pass for the real thing. Oh, you're uncomfortably smart. And the smuggest man. <laughs> All last night, I didn't sleep laughing about your series. <laughs> for instance, Michael Todd. Okay, how is the professor? Perfectly fine. And if you'd seen the screen test this afternoon, you'd realize the job is practically done. Well, now, what have you got to say about that? Mm, well, I'd say it's about time he began to feel very grateful. Grateful? Excuse me, Miss Ainsley. These passages just arrived by special messenger. Oh, 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 thanks, Minna. That's your birthday? No, no, it's not my birthday. <laughs> well, a basket of fruit. Candied fruit. Now, nobody could be that hungry. <laughs> What idiot thought that up? Well, isn't there a card in it? Oh, of course, of course. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. Imagine. Yeah, someone you know? Yes, naturally. <laughs> so th this other box is obviously it's candy. Is there a card? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yes. Uh, yeah. oh, from a client. <laughs> All four packages from clients? Huh? Yeah, a, a quartet. Yeah. Oh. Four of them. They, they sing, you know, together. Yeah. All very talented. Oh, hello. Hello, Henry. Oh, hello, President. Oh, oh, oh Michael, do you mind? Mr. Tepper and I will be through in five minutes. Oh, you're angry. Well, what, me? No, I should say not. On the contrary. Really? Look across my heart and hope to die. Please, please. I'm delighted. I'm out of my mind. Now, why don't you wait There's one more. Just one more what, Professor? Yes. Ah, oh, did you send a mic? <laughs> Didn't Henry know? No, he didn't know, but he knows now. <laughs> oh, they're really lovely, Michael, but you shouldn't go spending your money like this. Well, if I, I don't start spending my royalties, I'll clutter up the bank. Yes, but still, I don't I've think... been thinking about you. Carol, you work too hard. No fun, no relaxation. Well, I never felt better in That's my life. That's what they all say, just before they collapse. Now, get dressed. What for? Well, didn't Henry tell you? Dinner, then the theater, and after well, that... What did Henry have to do with Why, all this? Why, he arranged for the theater ticket. And just and he... when did all this take place? Yeah, uh, this morning, Miss Ainsley, just before Michael went shop. Now, up you go, Carol. We haven't all the time in the world, you know. But, but, but I can't do this uh, to Mr. Pepper. He, he has certain material to get from me. He's working against the deadline. Oh, don't mind me. You young folks go right ahead. <laughs> Thanks. Henry. Yeah. Yes, yes. I'll yeah. just stay here and use my typewriter. We'll we'll have a quiet chat when you get home. Oh, uh, Mike, by the way, uh, how is your singing voice? The singing voice? I don't sing, Henry. Oh, sorry. I guess I got you mixed up with a quartet. <laughs> now, what did he mean by that? Oh, my was that an evening? Wow! Henry! Henry! Oh, thanks, Henry. Well, have a good time? Yeah, we have a good time. Tell him, Carol. Yeah, you tell him. Oh, the theater was wonderful. <laughs> and then we really started, didn't we, Carol? That's we did. That's we did. And the nightclub. Why well, can't I remember all of them? I can. <laughs> oh, little Carol's tired. Well, that settles it. Little Carol's going right to her Betty for a full eight hours. Sorry, Henry, no more work tonight. Oh, you're right, Mike. You two butterflies are going to fold your wings and go Betty by. Leave us not, be coy. All right, my girl, to bed you go. But I can't go to bed uh, without my milk. Uh, 
Milk? All, all my life. Uh, would you be a good boy and go get it for me? You bet. Oh, and, and warm it. Warm it. You bet. Milk? Warm milk? You? I hate it. Gives me cramps. <laughs> Say, tell me, how do you really feel? Like an occupied country. <laughs> I could kill you. Huh? Well, I didn't have anything to do with it. Oh, no. Little Twinkle Toes never had such a time, thanks to you. <laughs> well, look, it was the least one pal could do for another. Oh, that's what I want to talk to you about, this pal business. Yeah, well, perfectly harmless. Actually, I'm just an innocent bystander. I'm uh, getting the kick of your life. Yeah, I'm and so is he. So, you know, that's what you really ought to be worrying about. Hmm? Well, when a guy like that gets it, a, a guy who's never been in love before, it's just murder. Oh, and just what do you suggest? Well, I'd just call a halt right now, if I were you, and straighten him out. Of course, it's risky. He might clear out Oh, on he you. won't clear out. You leave that to me. Carol! Yes! Here you are. You're warm now. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Cobb's screen test is an unqualified success. And the ex-professor from Buxton College, now known as Anthony Street, is the center of attention at the reception in Carol's apartment. The party is about to break up when Carol greets an unexpected guest, a father of the senator. Darling, what a wonderful surprise. So why aren't you in Washington? Committee meeting in New York. Uh, what... Uncle Anthony Street. Oh, well, I just stopped by to remind you that Friday is my birthday. I know, dear. Tell me, what do you want? I want you to come home for a nice, calm weekend. But, darling... I'm leaving tomorrow for Hollywood. Hollywood? Anthony Street. I've got to see that he gets properly launched. Uh, can't you just crack a bottle over his head? <laughs> well, Senator. Senator Avery. Well, Henry Pepper. Don't tell me you go to these jaw parties. Well, you two know each other. Pepper? Why, he wrote a first-rate article about me once. Yes, your daughter's the victim this time, Senator. Oh, really? Well, how long has this been going on? Too long. Yeah, days and days. Yeah, but you collected everything about me in an hour. Well, I changed my methods with the subject. Oh. <laughs> well, goodbye, Carol. Phone me at the hotel. Goodbye, darling. I will. Oh, by the way, Mr. Pepper, I don't recall that you were on the list of those invited here tonight. Oh, I had to come. Your protege wants to talk to me. About what? Well, here he comes. I'll ask him. Henry! Hello! Say, I've got to talk to you. Let's go in here. Excuse us, Carol. Now, now just a little second, please. Yes, excuse us. Great party, Carol. Great. The professor was a sensation. Pat, what do you suppose they've got to talk about? Oh, no, forget it. Come on, now. Say goodbye. Uh, and funny thing, Henry. Carol knew all the time how people felt about me, like the people here tonight and millions of others. I've become important to them, a part of their lives. And if it hadn't been for Carol, a very perceptive woman, she showed me how to make the most of my life, Henry. Why shouldn't I? Huh? I mean, if a man has an honest emotion toward a woman, well, why should he conceal it? Your sheer hypocrisy. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you say that, Henry. Come, come now, boys. The party's over. Oh, you mean they're all gone? Yep, they've all gone. Well, Mr. Pepper... No more questions to ask me? Yeah, I'll mail you the last installments to Hollywood. You can wire any corrections, if you find time, that is. Oh, why shouldn't I find time? <laughs> well, you're going to be so busy, Miss Ainsley. That's a lot on your hands, eh, Professor? <laughs> you said it, Henry. Uh, well, won't you stay and uh, have a little farewell drink? No, oh, I never touch it. Bye now. <laughs> well, Michael, uh, tomorrow you start the big adventure. Uh, we do, Carol. Uh, uh, yes. You and I. Oh, well, yes, of course, in a way. In all ways. Why, there'd be no adventure if it weren't for you. Well, you mustn't underestimate yourself. You have right? the vision. I wanted to make you proud. I did it for you. Well, I, I am proud. Proud fit to burst. And, and really, it's very sweet of you, Michael. And, and now I've got to do a little packing. Carol, I'm trying to tell you something. Well, I, I'm listening. Really, I am. It's just that you... Carol, know. I want it always to be you and I. But, just... You and I. Michael, you, you're hurting my shoulder. L let, let me go. I can't. I can never let you go. Uh, Michael. Now, my, oh, the phone, the phone. Let me get it. <laughs> Minutes in bed. I've got to answer it. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Yes, Mrs. Carroll. Oh, father. It's my father. No, not father. This is Pat. Not really, father. Carol, this is Pat. P-A-T, Pat. And I what? Want... You want me to come over to the hotel now? Well, of course, darling. Right away. 
I'll go with you, Carol. No, 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 no. You know, father and daughter are sort of confidential. Well, I, I can wait outside, no, no, can I? I you won't hear of it. I might be up the rest of the night. I'll, I'll see you in the morning, Michael. <laughs> For heaven's sake, wake up. Mm, who is it? Carol. Uh, well, this is father. <laughs> What's the matter with you anyway? Look, Pat, I, I'm at the office. Something urgent's come up. Uh, I've got to go to Washington. But you're going to Hollywood tomorrow. You're going, Pat. You're going to take Michael to Hollywood. I am? Uh, there, there's no alternative, but, but don't let him know. Him Joining you in Chicago. Chicago? Okay, you're the boy. Oh, and Pat... Get me a train reservation for Washington. Oh, call me back. I'll be right here in the office. There, uh, Pepper! Yes, I figured you'd be running for your life tonight. And if you did, this is exactly what you want. What do you mean, running for my life? Well, my, my father wants to see me. It's very important. Won't he be surprised? <laughs> Look, Mr. Pepper. I said goodnight to you once. Do we have to go another round? Not a hair out of place. My, after that struggle, I thought I'd find you at least a little breathless and panting. Oh, so you knew what was going to happen. Mm, well, I had a rough idea. I got to wondering how you'd react. Well, it seems there's no reaction at all. Now, will you please get out of here? Still so cool, so safe and snug behind the big business desk. Huh? Well, what did you expect me to do? Stay home and cope with that impassioned St. Bernard? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You, you were right. Don't ever put him straight. Don't tell him that you never actually felt anything in all your life. In fact, you don't even know... I feel as much as you or anyone else. Only it just so happens I, I, I don't feel for Michael Cobb. Oh, you mean another man could strike a spark beneath that blank efficiency? You can't talk to me that way. Now, once and for all, you can't talk to me that well, way. I never will again. This is possibly the last interview. That is when I learn the last thing I want to know. You keep away from me. Well, what do you mean, the last thing you want to know? I mean the other 90%. Up to now, I've only seen 10% function. But I've, I've looked for something more, and if I could find it, I have an idea I might be interested. Uh, let me go. All this sort of thing can't happen to me twice in the same night. <laughs> After all, you look like a woman. Your skin glows. Your eyes shine. And here's a man very much taken with you, standing very close by. But what's your next impulse, Miss Angley? Why do... Get in his arms, isn't it? Like this. And uh, then what? Well, the next natural compelling thing is uh, is a kiss, isn't it? Like uh, no, no, I guess not. <laughs> well, that uh, winds up the biography. We say good night. <laughs> Oh, yes, Pat. The ticket? Oh, thank you. I... No. No, 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 I'll be back from Washington on Monday. Right back behind my big, fat business desk. <laughs> The fact that my daughter's here. Oh. Carol, thank you, dear. Well, you asked for it, darling. But I thought you were going to Hollywood, Carol, with that brilliant fellow. As a matter of fact, I was. But what are my plans compared to Dad's? Somehow this worries me. <laughs> Dinner is served, Senator. And a telephone call for you for Sarah Long Distance. Uh, she's not here. Oh, now it may be important, dear. You all go ahead. I'll only be in minute. Well, I'll just if I... I didn't want to disturb you until I was sure. Talk sense, Pat. Sure of what? Anthony Speed has disappeared. He never even got on the train. Pat! I told him you couldn't make it, so I went after the baggage, and when I came back, he was gone. But he can't just disappear. Hey. Too many people know what he looks like. Hello, Carol. Michael. Michael. Carol, I just had to Pat, Pat, he's here. I'll call you back. Michael, how could you do a thing like this? Everyone in the country expected you to take the train to Hollywood. You're disappointing millions of people. You're, you're, are you listening? I haven't seen you since last night. Is that an answer? What would I be going to Hollywood for without you? Well, I, 
Well, I said I'd be out there. I can't wait, Carol. I don't want any part of this career unless it includes you. Well, now, that's very sweet of you, but, uh, but uh, now isn't the time to talk about Why it. Why not? Well, because Father's waiting dinner. I mean, and the first thing you've got to do is to go to California. Not without you, Carol. Oh, Michael, you're being positively childish. Worse, I'm walking on eggshells. I'm in love. But uh, I, I'm all wrong for you. I, I can't even bake. You should marry a nice, dirty homebody, a Buxton Buxton. A Buxton Buxton. A girl from Buxton. <laughs> You mean you don't care? Of course. I, well, I mean, I'm very fond of I you. knew it. Well, Michael, now, we mustn't lose our heads. I must have time to think. I'll give you till tomorrow noon. Then a quick, simple marriage. Oh, and... What was that? The oh, bell going off in my head. <laughs> what now, Ben? Some gentlemen senators from the newspapers. They want to see Anthony Street. Yeah, but that's absurd. Mr. Street's on a train going to Hollywood. But, Senator, we know he's here. Somebody recognized him. Oh, 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 now, listen. Tell him that you came down here for a last-minute conference that you're leaving by plane tomorrow for the coast. With you? What? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Anything, anything. It's all right, Dad. Let him in. Mr. Street here, gentlemen. But, uh, Carol... I'll leave you here with Mr. Street. Come along, Dad. But, Carol, I don't know. Yeah, we well, Mr. Street, why the change in plan? Well, it's nothing, really. Just that Miss Ainsley and I... Yes, Mr. Street? Uh, well, we... Oh, I don't think she'd mind if I tell you. Confidentially, gentlemen, Miss Ainsley and I are engaged. <laughs> well, the date hasn't been set yet, but I hope for the near future. Well, well, getting everything you wanted, gentlemen. Oh, this is wonderful, Miss Ainsley. Congratulations. Yes, it'll be great in the park. Thank you so much for dropping by. Good night. Well, now, dinner's waiting, Michael. Come along in. I'll meet Dad's friends. Ah. Dad. We'll have coffee in the living room then. Oh, and bring the cake. You've got to cut it, Dad. It's your birthday. Well, uh, if you'll uh, turn off the radio. Stop stalling, Senator. Blow out the candles and make a wish. It's amazing how wishes come true, Dad. What did you call me? Oh, come on, no, no, no. Take a deep breath. And blow. We interrupt our musical program to bring you an item of social importance from Washington, D.C. Washington, Announcement was made tonight at the home of Senator Ainsley of the forthcoming marriage of his daughter, Carol, to Anthony Street, author of The Whirlwind and former professor at Buxton did, College. Did you hear what I heard? Michael, program. how did... Have you any idea how this happened? Uh, but, but please turn off that radio. Well, darling, I spoke to the press, of course, but in the strictest confidence. Oh, oh, you, you don't mind, Carol? Mind? Come well, on, I, Carol. I, when's the wedding? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Well, good evening, Carol. Senator. Well, Peppa, what are you doing here? For well, me, I'm the best man. <laughs> of course, darling. I phoned Henry before I left New York. I told you I'd arrange for everything. Peppa. I want to talk to you. Me? Now, Pepper, alone. All right, Pepper. Say it. You think I engineered this wedding in cold blood, don't you? But I took the easiest way to get Michael Cobb to Hollywood. Why, I think it's very touching, this spontaneous romance. Well, I want you to know I, I had nothing to do with it. I, well, I... I said I'd think about it. Oh, I had to tell him something. Well, sure, with the whirlwind hanging in the balance, naturally. I should know better than try to talk to you. Well, then why do you? Because I do care what you think when it comes to something as, well, as, as important as this. Look, I see no real problem here. Mike has to go to Hollywood. Too many people expect it. Now, if marriage is the way to get him there, then marriage it ought to be. Now, you wait a minute. You'll be Mrs. Whirlwind for as long as it takes to get him settled. And then you'll be off to Reno and back to your job in New York while he stays put and earns you 10%. I see. And while I'm waiting for him to get settled... Oh, he won't even know the difference. He's never been in love before. He doesn't know what a really 100% woman is like. Well, he won't even... Hey, where are you going? Now, wait a minute. I'm not... Listen, everybody. I've got an announcement to make. There isn't going to be a wedding. No wedding. Is that clear? I don't want a wedding. Nobody can make me have a wedding. No. I'm sorry, Michael. You're a handsome young man, and you have talent and a fine profile, but it won't be you. If I failed to set you straight because I hated to lose you as a whirlwind, I'm sorry. You can hate me for it. And you can walk all over me. Anything but marry me. That's where a woman draws the line. I wish you all the luck in the world, Michael. No matter what you decide. You can go back to Buxton or you can go to Hollywood or you can just plain go. <laughs> May 
I come in. You usually do. Uh, look, it, it's all right, Carol. It's going to be all right. Oh, I, I can't help it. I'm bald in here. Carol, I know it's tough to smash this whirlwind business. I don't care it's... anything about that. But everything else... You standing there and all, all the terrible things I said to Michael. Well, they had to be said. Poor Michael. He'll, he'll never be the same. Oh, now, don't you believe it. He'll go back to Buxton as celebrity, and people will come from miles around to sit at the feet of Professor Cobb. He'll grow old and happy doing the job that he was meant to do. You think so? Of course. Pepper is always right. Well, I'll admit you've called the trends on everything so far. Carol? Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Michael. Has it ever occurred to you, Carol, that the whirlwind is vitally important to some 80 million people? Why, yes. And wouldn't you say that that matters far more than the personal feelings of any one individual? Yes. Yes, I would. I would too, Carol. I am not going to let my public down. I'll be leaving for Hollywood tomorrow. Good night, Carol. Henry? <laughs> Back to Buxton. You certainly missed the boat on that one, Henry. <laughs> yeah, well, you know whirlwind's unpredictable. <laughs> Pepper, how about a deal? You're talented and intelligent. I think I might be able to do something for you. Oh, oh you'd have to sign a contract, however. Ainsley, I, um, I might be interested on my own terms, of course. Oh, for instance? Well, for instance, no screen test. No? No option. Really? And no 10%. What? Now, this is strictly 50-50. 50-50? Well, you better make up your mind. It's a long-term contract and exclusive. Well, take it or leave it. I'll, uh... Well, I'll, uh... Oh, I'll take it. Alan Russell and Robert Covey. Welcome back, Rob. How many performances of Wonderful Town did you do in New York? Oh, about 500, Irving. But it wasn't as strenuous as some pictures I've made. Uh, for instance, uh, never wave at a whack. Why not? I, I said, never wave at a whack. Well, I heard you. My answer is, you wave at your friends, I'll wave at mine. <laughs> Rob, you remember the picture Rob made at RKO before she left for Broadway? It also starred Paul Douglas and Mary Wilson. It's a, a sort of a play on words. Never wave at a whack. Why, didn't she use Lux 